So this video is gonna be a little bit different today. Instead of kind of just me crabbing, I took some other people out with me crabbing, some good friends, and I wanna give you some five tips I noticed while we were out crabbing that I thought other people might really wanna know when they go out crabbing as well. Now I've crabbed with Chloe, Ryan, and my son a whole bunch over the last few years, but every single time we learn something new or out when we're out here, so I thought some other people might wanna know this too. One of the things you're gonna notice right away is it is not early in the morning right now. This is in fact, middle of the day. We decided to go out at about 12 o'clock and the reason was is because in the morning the creek was packed full of crabbers. I looked at the tides and realized that high tide was at about 2 o'clock so I decided to go ahead and just wait until 12 o'clock to fish kind of the first part of the or the last part of the incoming tide and the first part of the outgoing tide. So that's really tip number one. It's okay to crab during the day. As long as you got moving water, I like a high tide, it's a great time to go crabbing. Now tip number two, you probably saw Chloe hit the line a few times um, while she was netting, and it's not Chloe's fault, it's 100% my fault. Two things that I'm doing wrong here is one, I'm getting the line too close to the boat when I'm steering. So what you wanna do is you wanna be able to give that netter plenty of space to be able to net those crabs. And if you look on the net too, I left my GoPro handle on there. Don't set your netter up for failure. Make sure that if you put them out there, you're giving them enough space to net those crabs and not like letting it get stuck on the net or stuff like that. So right when I right away, when I realized what was happening, I went ahead and cut that out for her. And we had Ryan up front with a second net ready to go in case any other crabs came up. And of course, some nice ones came up to the boat as well. So yeah, you wanna make it as easy as you possibly can on the netter if you have people netting there. And I found that the further out that line is really kind of parallel out to it, the easier it is for that netter to get those crabs. Tip number three that I would say for taking anyone out crabbing with you, especially when they're netting, is communication. So I'm always talking to the person netting, letting them know when I think a crab is coming up or I see a crab on the line, not screaming or yelling at them, but just telling them, hey, you know, there comes one coming up the line and stuff like that. It makes it so much easier for them to be ready when a crab is on there. Now, something that I notice when I'm out crabbing, and I try to share with everyone else that's everyone else that's out there, you can tell when a bigger crab is on the line. If you look at the trot line right now, it's at a different angle, slightly going into the water than it is when there's nothing on there. So right now there is nothing on the line. It looks like it's at a pretty shallow angle going to the water. But as we get closer to the, this next crab, you're gonna see that line starting to dip down further and further. And the weight of the crab is actually pulling that line down. You can have a pretty good idea that a big crab, like this one that's about to come up, are gonna be coming up soon. So I'm always telling the person on the net when I see that line changing that direction. And I think it's one of those things that can make it so the netter is more confident that something's coming up. And here's another example. You can see how much further down that line is and Chloe is ready for that big old hammer crab that she caught there. Tip number four is keep it light out there. I get it, you're out there, you've put all this work into baiting the trot line, finding the spot, now you put out the trot line and you wanna try to catch your bushel or whatever it is, amount of crabs, but people missing crabs is part of the game. People are not going to catch every single crab on that trot line. Especially if they're newer crabbers or younger crabbers, they're gonna miss a few and that's okay. The goal is to have fun out here. So whenever someone misses something, I'm never getting on them too hard, you know, and just trying to encourage them to keep going because you want them to have a good time. So my son's a great example of this. You know, he was having trouble at first kind of figuring out how he wanted to net and how to hold it. Um, but by a few crabs in, he really started to get the hang of it. So you can see his confidence start to grow. He's netting a few more crabs like this one that's about to come up now. That increased confidence definitely helped him catch the next few crabs. So he caught this nice male right there, caught another one after that, where he had really nice net technique just to get it scooped up and slammed it in there. And then he actually had two back to back. And this is the first time he ever did it. So he caught the one, looked down the line, saw the next crab, called off his help and said, I got it. And he had two crabs, two big keeper crabs in that net. That was the first time he ever done it. And I was super proud of him. All right, and so my fifth and final tip that I wanted to tell you about crabbing is one of the most important things to do while you're out here to make it easy for the netter and easy for the driver too, is to lay your line to have the wind at your back. You can't really tell from here, but it was blowing like 
15, 20 miles per hour this day out of the northwest. So there was a whole bunch of the creek that I wasn't able to crab because it would have been the wind either blowing it sideways or you know off the line. And that just makes it so hard and frustrating for everyone on the boat. So I found this one stretch of shoreline that literally the wind was blowing down that I could lay the line and just be able to have the, bo the boat be pushed down the shoreline by the wind. And most of the time when I was driving, I didn't even have the motor in gear. I was just letting the wind push me down the line. Now, if someone was a little bit um, faster of a crabber, I probably would have driven as well and got the line going a little quicker, but it was the perfect speed for Chloe and Sawyer. The baits were coming up just fast enough to keep it interesting, but not so fast it got overwhelming. So you wanna make sure you got that wind at your back because it just makes it so much easier for the netter and the driver to do it. And it can make it a much more um, fun experience for everybody on the boat. So those are my top five tips for getting people out there crabbing. Drop some comments below and let me know some of your tips that you use when you go out crabbing. Thanks for watching today. Hopefully next week I'll have another crabbing video out for you.